Good afternoon. Welcome to Health Futures, Taking Stock in You. I'm your host, Bob Roth. And if you're just tuning in for the very first time, we're a show about how our older adult population can live a healthier, happier life. And we've been coming at you uh, now. We're in our fifth year, hard to believe. And uh, we're coming at you live right now from the Scottsdale Air Park Money Radio Studios. It is February 9th. And uh, we are having one of those Chamber of Commerce days. It's absolutely beautiful here. Uh, Phoenix Open has now left, or should I call it the Waste Management Open has now left. And, you know, we got many events that are happening here in our state, uh, but we're really queuing up for spring training, which really starts right at the end of the month and runs all the way up to April. So we're really excited about our Diamondbacks because we haven't had a whole lot to root for on our other teams. So, uh Baseball's getting ready, springtime is here, and uh, all is well. And at the same time, we're having a lot of activity happening in our legislature. Uh, for those that uh, didn't stay up late last night, uh, Congress finally got the bill, uh, spending bill approved. Uh, it was nearly an act of God to get that done. Uh, but also, as it relates to legislature, uh, this is the time where bills are being dropped, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the bills that are coming up. And uh, it's also getting very interesting in the healthcare space. In the last 60 days, so much has happened. You know, I've talked about it here on the show, but I mean, the fact that CVS bought Aetna and Humana is now being bought by Kindred. And then we heard last week about Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway coming together with Amazon and Jamie Dimon and JP Morgan. To really reshape the way healthcare is being delivered, and then to top everything off, last Thursday night, CMS, for those that don't know what CMS is, is Centers of Medicare and Medicaid Services, announced that Medicare Advantage plans, starting January first, two thousand nineteen, will start to pay for the services that companies like Cypress Home Care provide. And we're talking about in-home care services. So for me, it's a real tribute to the fact that CMS and others are finally realizing the work that we do in the home, enabling our older adult population to exist as close as they can to being independent. It's so important. It's important for many reasons. We know that 92% of individuals want to age in place. And then we also know that the least costly setting for someone to be in is in their own home. So thank you, CMS, for realizing that. We're going to see how that's all going to look in the weeks and months to come because that's going to start January 1st, 2019. So if you're just tuning in for the first time, our show is about how our older adult population can live a healthier, happier life. But how do we do this? We bring extraordinary guests, and today's no different. Today I'm very happy to welcome to the show Joan Corber Walker. She's the president and CEO of the Arizona Bio Industry Association, acronym AZ Bio. Welcome to the show, Joan. Well, thank you so much, Bob. It's a great pleasure to be here. Well, it's great to have you here. And uh, one, I've always been a fan of yours, and I've only gotten a chance to get to know you over the last couple of years. And two, I love your name because my mother's name was Joan. So, ah. so welcome to the show. And Joan, it's great to have you here on today. Well, thank you, Bob. You know, so much activity is happening. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I want to be able to pivot it over to you because you just you know had a big event happen last week last month and uh you're celebrating an anniversary yeah we are so az bio or the arizona bio industry association for your listeners to help them kind of understand what that is so um it's kind of like a chamber of commerce and we work with all of the researchers at the universities and the hospitals, as well as the entrepreneurs that are coming up with great ideas to help us live longer and live better. And the big drug companies and medical device companies who provide the products that allow us to, you know, get around and participate in life and spend more time with our grandkids. So AZ Bio supports all of those groups. Wow. I mean, I, I did not know that. I really didn't realize the the web and the net that is casted by 
the AZ Bio Group? You know, it's interesting. You know, when we first started this, and it was Governor Hall that created the bioscience cluster 20 years ago last year. Wow. And since then, um, there's been over $18 billion invested in Arizona, building new hospitals and research facilities and um, bringing new companies to life. Abraxane, the cancer drug that helps so many patients, is not only developed here and tested here, but it's made here, too. And Medtronic, you know, lots of your listeners probably have a pacemaker. Right. And um, all of the electronics that go into those pacemakers is made right in Tempe, right at the corner of University and the 143. Wow. Did not know that. Yeah, isn't that cool? Well, you know what's really cool, too? And I, I mean, it might be a week or two when I haven't driven a certain road or maybe a month. Mm-hmm. And I'm driving down to Central Phoenix, and I'm talking about down by Van Buren and 5th Street, uh, 7th Street, 3rd Street, um, seeing apartments go up, seeing university buildings going up. Uh, last year I got a chance to go into the University of Arizona Medical Building in one of those classrooms when the uh, the fast-pitch startups were, yep. were out there. Um, it is amazing how this town in the last 10 years, especially downtown, has just transformed itself. Absolutely. I mean, I remember in 2006, I was the CEO of the Arizona Small Business Association, and my office was right on Van Buren. And there were certain times a day where you didn't really want to drive down Van Buren, let around walk down Van Buren. Right. Today, we have, you know, Gateway Community College has just ex- blossomed. The Center for Entrepreneurial Innovation has entrepreneurs in it, and we're seeing a whole revitalization across that community. Well, and I understand there are like 10,000 students that live downtown now. And I, right. I mean, I, I see apartment complexes going up, restaurants going up. I mean, when I first moved here 24 years ago, the town evacuated at 5 o'clock. Right. Nobody went downtown. The only time you went downtown was to see a Suns game. Or when the Coyotes first got here. Right. You know, that was it. I mean, if you were caught downtown, you, you had be, better be careful. But now it is just buzzing. And, and I think a lot of it has to do with the work that AZ Bio is doing and, and the universities are doing down there. It is amazing. And talk about AZ Bio. I mean, TGen is right there. It, and you know what? After the break, we can talk about all the cool things that are actually being developed there right now. Well, that is really cool. I mean, Joan, it's a pleasure to have you on. I'm just saddened that we only have four segments because we we have so much to cover. But uh, I look forward to getting into our second segment, learning a little bit more about what is going on in AZ Bio and what is going on in our community. This here, Phoenix, is a hub, and there's a lot of stuff going on here. So we're going to take a break right now you're listening to a little bruce springsteen taking us out so thank you very much james you've been listening to health futures taking stock in you i've got joan corporate walker she's the president and ceo from az bio here in the studio we will be right back now back to health futures taking stock in you if you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care Call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. If you are just tuning in, you're listening, first of all, to Health Futures taking stock in you. And if you're just tuning in, I've got Joan Corper Walker in the studio. She is from AZ Bio, and that's Arizona Bio Industry Association. She's the president and CEO. And uh, we are in our second segment. You can catch that first segment right up on our website at cypresshomecare.com. Hit the drop-down arrow on the media button, and we're the third button down. You can catch that first segment and about 180 or 90 others that we've been bringing to you for almost five years. So, uh, Joan, we were talking about in the first segment, uh, you had a 20th anniversary. That's right. And 20 years you guys been at it. And we were talking about how the landscape of Phoenix has changed. Mm-hmm. And I and I know personally, um, I go back to the mid '90s where I was working with um, a fellow by the name of Dick Mallory, who was one of the founding partners of, uh, or one of the managing partners of Snell and Wilmer. Mm-hmm. And he he had a uh, a beautiful wife, Franny was her name, and yeah. and she had cancer, yeah. and she, he didn't get treatment, or she didn't get treatment here in Phoenix. She had to 
drive a couple times a week down to U of, U of A to Tucson to get treatment. And I know he was an integral part of creating a lot of the bioscience stuff that has happened mm -hmm. in Phoenix. So 20 years. I want you to talk a little bit about what's happened in 20 years. Absolutely. And, you know, um, Dick and Francie's love story, and it's, you know, Valentine's Day is around the corner. Um, there's never a good time for a patient that is battling cancer. And, um, you know, towards the end, it's it's harder, especially on the ones that you love. And um, Dr. David Albert, who was um, Francie's doctor, um, you know, was very, very close to the family. And, and thanks to his care, you know, she got two extra years and she got to see her son get married and, and wonderful things. But towards the end, you know, she said to Dick, you know, he said, what can I do? And she said, use what you've been given to make sure this doesn't happen to somebody else. And it was Dr. David Albert and Dr. Dan Von Hoff and, um, and Dick and others that came together to go and see Jeff Trent and say, we want the first translational genomics research institute here in Arizona. What will it take? Wow. And Jeff said, well, it's going to take $100 million. And they left, and I kind of think that he didn't think they'd be back. But as legend will have it, there were 100 meetings in 100 days, and that team raised $100 million, and TGen was born. Wow. And that was the start of the Phoenix Biomedical Campus. Everything you see there, including the Arizona Cancer Center, so that patients like Francie don't have to drive to Tucson anymore. Right. All of that came about because some people in Arizona cared deeply and had a big goal and they hit it. And you know what? Now we have another big goal and we're going, we're doubling down. Now Arizona's community has, has set a goal to create a $200 million endowment. And when it's properly invested, that will bring Ten million dollars a year back into our community, so that young companies that are coming up with great ideas will have that early funding, so that those cures and treatments get to patients faster. How exciting! How exciting! I mean, and and to think that that was the the genesis of what we have here, and now you know we've got Cancer Treatment Centers of America, we've got Honor Health with Virginia Piper Cancer Center. We've got uh, MD Anderson and Banner. I mean, we have so much here now. Well, and Mayo. And Mayo. I, I, I forgot to mention Mayo. And, <laughs> of course, Mayo. But, I mean, we have so much here. And to think that that was just like 23 years ago, 22 years ago, that there was really nothing here. Well, we had some great hospitals here. I mean, our, our oldest hospital is St. Joe's. Did right. you know that St. Joseph's Hospital in Phoenix, now Dignity Health is... Um, you know, it was the fifth largest hospital system in the country. Now they're merging with Catholic Healthcare, and they they will be the second or third. Um, but did you know that Dignity St. Joseph's, right over on Third, right, they do more clinical trials at that facility than any other hospital in the entire Dignity Network. Did not know that. Yep, but in cancer. And um, especially in things that involve the brain, because they have baroneurological, right. which is one of the top institutes in the whole world for that. People come in from all over the world to get treatment there. They sure do. And then you add to it the Arizona Alzheimer's Consortium, which is one of the leading consortiums in the world for the study, not only of the disease itself, but how we can prevent it. Because right. as I get older, you know, one of the things that I worry about is that. And as we look at, you know, the policy for the world and, quite frankly, the budget for the world, if we don't figure out that puzzle, we've got some big problems coming at us. We do. And, and I will tell you, Joan, I had the pleasure of having two weeks ago Dr. Pierre Terrio here on the, sh on the show. And we talked about it not being an epidemic, but it's pandemic. And yeah. it, will, it will crush our economy and it will crush our society if we don't figure out a way to delay or, or or eliminate the onset of Alzheimer's. 
Correct. And and the work that Dr. Ryman and Dr. Terrio are doing and the amazing things that they're doing, not just to discover the drugs that can hopefully push back mm-hmm. um, an Alzheimer's diagnosis if, it, if genetically it's coming, or drugs that can help deal with some of the um, the symptoms that that affect all of us, but also some amazing resources for families to help them deal with this until we figure out how to solve the problem. And you're so right. I mean, the new models of care that they're developing and and the uh, the support groups, um, and, you know, he, he and uh, Heather Mulder were talking about some of the stuff that they are doing here in our community, whether it be with the Desert Botanical Institute or other places where families are able to get together and really not so much talk about the disease, but be together and be with the families. And you don't know this, Joan, and we're really just talking about it, but at Cyprus, two and a half years ago, we created a dementia program. Great. And and we have evidence-based information through this two and a half years, through some of the work that we're doing, that we're able to keep families together seven to eight months longer before they have to get placed. And in the Alzheimer's dementia world, that's an eternity. It is. If we can give them that much more time. But... We're, ra- we're racing against the clock, and it's not really looking good right now, but it is looking good that we have this consortium that you just described. And the greatest thing about this consortium is that it's open source. And that's the thing that just blows me away is that nobody is protecting what they're working oh, on. No. They're all sharing, whether it be you know in, in New York, whether it be in California, whether it be in, in Italy or France. England, I mean, we're in a race against this, and we're all working together. Because there's nothing more precious than our memories. Right. And that's the one thing you never want to lose. Well, you know what's interesting? One of the things that Dr. Terrio talked about, because we were promoting an event that they did at the Valley of the Sun JCC, Mm -hmm. and that was uh, on the 31st of January. We had 225 people show up for this. That's great. It was incredible. Not only was it sponsored by the JCC, but... Belmont Village was sponsoring it. The Alzheimer's Association was sponsoring it. Cyprus was sponsoring it, as was the um, the Banner Alzheimer's Institute. And one of the things that, you know, we oftentimes forget, and I have the pleasure of going on Sunday to go see the Hamilton show. Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm really excited about it, and I, I think my wife's even more excited. But, <laughs> but when you really look back to the Revolutionary War, and you look at mm-hmm. that in the 1700s, early mm-hmm. 1800s, we didn't live as long as we do today. And Dr. Oh, no. Pier- Dr. Terrio was talking about that. I mean, I think the average lifespan was about 36. Yep. And, uh, you know, we are living much longer. Double. And, and, and we're, you know, having issues as it relates to living much longer. But we can, because of modern science and technology and innovation, figure out a way to make aging much more comfortable and much more desirable and much more, as I talk about on the show, successful. It's not just about living longer. It's about living better. Right. Definitely living better. So as we get ready to close this second segment, because we got a lot of stuff to cover in the third and fourth, um, if people wanted to learn more about what you guys are doing, where do they find it? So there are two easy websites to remember. So for AZ Bio, it's AZ, just like Arizona. And then bio, B-I-O dot org. And we talked about that $200 million goal for the Healthcare Impact Foundation so that we can get more cures out in Arizona. And that website is A-Z-H-C-I-F dot org. Those are great websites. And, and how about events? Do you have anything coming up that we can... Oh, well, we've got Arizona Bioscience Week, and that'll be coming up in October. There'll be a whole week full of events. There'll be meetings for family offices and people that want to invest in innovation. There'll be the AZ Bio Awards. There'll be a huge party. And my favorite part, we'll have students from all over the states showing us their science projects, and they're the researchers of the future. They're going to solve some of these problems. High school students, college students? High school, community college, college, university, and even medical students. Well, cool stuff. It is cool stuff. And, you know, you, you talk about all of those places. And I really think that we oftentimes lose sight of the fact that Dr. Crow and what he's done at ASU is nothing short of phenomenal. Academically, I mean, they are tops in so many different areas. 
and one that I got a chance to experience during the Aging 2.0 Global Startup Challenge that you were a judge for mm-hmm. is that when we announced our awards, we merged them over with the Arizona Venture Devils contest, mm-hmm. which was being held at, with the engineering school, mm-hmm. part of the entrepreneurship program. And those young minds, there were 800 kids there. Yeah. They were pitching ideas and concepts that the ASU Foundation was funding, mm-hmm. which I really think is phenomenal that we have this kind of stuff here in our backyard. 20 years ago, we didn't have this stuff, and it's only going to get better. Absolutely. And, and it's so cool that you're on the front line. And <laughs> I'm having fun. It's keeping me young. And, you know, it's cool that I've got you here in the studio. So we're going we're gonna to take it out with a little Jason Mraz. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock in You. I'm your host, Bob Roth. i got Joan Corver-Walker. She's from AZ Bio. Stick around. It's halftime here. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and if you're just tuning in, I've got Joan Corber Walker. She's the president and CEO from Arizona Bio Industry Association, otherwise known as AZ Bio. We're in our third segment, and if you missed those first two, go up to our website at cypresshomecare.com. Click on the media button, drop down arrow to the third one, and you can catch this radio show in the first two segments and the next two segments. In probably a couple hours, we'll have it all loaded up there. Uh, you missed a lot because Joan was really talking about how this community in the last 20 years has really, really changed. All for the better. We were doing some phenomenal things here. And one of the things that Joan put out there was their website, and that is azbio.org, azbio.org. I just want you to know, Joan, I just went to your website, and one, it's, it is chock full of all kinds of great information. But I, I'll tell you what, you have in there something that's called the Healthcare Impact Foundation. Mm-hmm. I want you to tell us a little bit about this. So the Healthcare Impact Foundation was created, and this is so cool, at a dining room table in Ahwatukee. No way. So over the last 20 years, we've seen amazing things happen, and we've grown the number of companies here in Arizona at one of the fastest rates in the whole country for life sciences and healthcare. But the number of employees hasn't grown as quickly. And the reason for that is many of these great new entrepreneurs with great ideas, they don't have the funding that they need to grow the business to the point where, number one, the cures are getting out there faster, and number two, that they can can ramp up their hiring. So um, the state has done a lot to support this. You know, we talked before about, you know, $18 billion has gone in in the first 20 years. Well, the state of Arizona approved last fall or last session a billion dollars in new research infrastructure at our universities. We, we're talking a billion. One billion with a B. Yeah, we're not talking the Washington for our country. We're talking right here. Here in the, Arizona to build research institutes wow. like the Biodesign Institute and Bio5 in Tucson and the Cancer Center we just talked about. But if we aren't supporting the young companies that are taking the ideas out of those places and helping them turn into real products that help real people, we're not going to get the job done. Right. So we had to figure out how to solve that problem. We couldn't ask the government to do it because they just gave us a billion dollars. Right. So the Healthcare Impact Foundation is the people of Arizona coming together. And each of us can give a little bit, and you can find out about it at Again, azhcif.org, and explains why we're doing it, explains how we're doing it. But that little idea that started at a dining room table in Ahwatukee, Arizona has signed on to raise $200 million with an M. So you, you shared with me in the first segment the whole story about the Mallory's and their commitment through Dr. Jeffrey Trent to raise $100 million. So Which now, they did. So now you're talking about doubling down. And now we're doubling down. And wow. because think about it. The things that are happening at TGen right now, they're working on tests for Lyme disease, and they're working on tests and, and, and different ways to help patients that have valley fever. And 
if we don't have ways to turn those great discoveries into companies, how will they help people? Right. So it's our job as the community to figure out how we get this done. And it doesn't matter if you're on a fixed income and you just want to give $5 to say you were part of this. Or if you've got lots of blessings and you want to give more. But together, we can hit that goal and provide early stage funding for great ideas that will make life better in Arizona and around the world forever. So we're talking about the government, the state of Arizona, coming up with a billion. We're talking about through philanthropy, doubling down two hundred million. Yep. Um, we're talking about uh, to use your vernacular, getting the job done. And for me, you know, not only finding new innovations and and research and and ways to eliminate some of these horrible things, like you said about Lyme disease mm-hmm. uh, and cancers, um, but for me as a citizen of our our great state of Arizona. We're going to create jobs. That's right. And We're going to create jobs and, and really, really spurn this economy. You talked about Michael Crow, and I'm a big fan of Michael Crow, and I got my MBA at ASU and W.P. Carey School. There's your commercial, Michael. <laughs> and so, but right now in our sciences departments at ASU and U of A and NAU and GCU, we are training brilliant young minds. And then we're exporting them to other places because we need to have the companies here so we can keep their kid, our kids here. And as grandma, I want to keep my grandkids here too. So, so Healthcare Impact Foundation Arizona, mm-hmm. uh, you told me at the break there's a, there's a bigger vision. So, so, so what, what is that vision? So this little idea, uh-huh. okay, this problem's not unique to Arizona. And so we were in Seattle and we were talking to people at the Paul Allen Institute. Paul had a, a prior career at a little company called Microsoft. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and Seattle has the same problem. So they've signed on and they're going to raise an endowment just like Arizona is. And there are five other states right now from coast to coast that are looking at this as a solution and countries. We're actually talking to groups in Brisbane, Australia and Singapore and Geneva, but they got money in Switzerland. Oh yeah. But they don't have money going into their life science companies and we're going to help them figure out how to do that. So that little idea that had a seed in Arizona is sprouting up all over the world. I love it. And the greatest thing about it, Joan, and getting to know you and really really becoming a friend of yours, you're helping drive that. And I would imagine that that's a part of something you're going to be involved in, correct? I am on the global board of trustees. I love it. And that dining room table in Awatuki was my dining room table. <laughs> I love it. I want to play a little game. And James, if you could cue it up, uh, I want to kind of give a little, do this game and I'll kind of set the stage for our fourth segment. Cool. Cool. Healthcare Jeopardy. Right here on Health Futures, it's the first time. Thank you, Joan, for bringing Healthcare Jeopardy to the table. Okay, so the first answer $10 billion. Hmm. I know. $10 billion is the question would be how many people will be on the planet by the year 2060? 26. How many are on there now? About seven. About seven. Wow. Ten billion. Okay, here's the second answer. And what would the question be? One billion. That means one in eight by 2030. That's the number of people that are around the world that are going to be over the age of 65. And as we all know, as we get older, things just don't work like they used to. Exactly. And like we said in the last segment, back in the revolutionary days, we only lived to about 35, 36 years old. So, yes. How about this one? Number three, 4.4 trillion globally. And that's dollars, 4.4 trillion dollars globally. What would be the savings if we could reduce cancer deaths 
by 10% per year. Holy cow. Wow. I got two more that I got to get through okay. before the segment. That is an amazing figure. 10%? All right. Fourth one. $367 billion. What would we save if we could push back Alzheimer's by five years just in the United States? Incredible. And the last one, $3.3 trillion and 17.9%. That is what the United States spent on health care in 2016. And the other would be what is the percentage of our GDP? So 18% of our GDP yep. spent on health care. Wow. And how much of that is spent like in the last six months of someone's life? A large percentage. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in the fourth segment because I advocate, obviously, comfort and, you know, I advocate palliative care and hospice, uh, not necessarily heroic means when they don't really drive it. It's important that we always give the patient and the doctor the ability to make the best choice for the patient. I love it. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock, and you got the who taking us out. How about that? It's Friday, February 9th. Thank you, James. Segment's down. we got one more to go. I really enjoyed playing Jeopardy with you. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we get back. All right, thanks. You got it. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and if you're just tuning in, I got Joan Corber Walker here in the studio, and I got James doing two Bruce Springsteen songs. That is really awesome. Thank you. Thank you, James. It is Friday here in Scottsdale, Arizona. We're coming at you live from the Money Radio Studios, 1510 AM, 105.3 FM. And if you missed the first three segments, go out to our website at cypresshomecare.com. Hit the media button up on the top. Third button down is the radio show. You missed three extraordinary segments. And the last segment in our third segment, it was the first ever. We played Jeopardy. That's right. And we really learned a lot about what's going on. And as far as learning, we had, and I talked about it at the top of the hour, some of the changes in healthcare mm -hmm. that have just happened over the last 60 days. And, yep. And just last week, you know, I talked about, you know, Warren Buffett with, with Berkshire Hath Hathaway and J.P. Morgan and Amazon coming together, uh, which is really a big deal. And I talked about CMS now authorizing Medicare. K, Medicare Advantage plans to to pay for services that companies like Cypress do provide. So the landscape is changing by the minute. And speaking about the minute, Joan Walker Corber, you were up late last night. So <laughs> I was. You were up really late, and because your industry is impacted so much by politics, you were glued to that television to find out what was going to happen about the government shutdown. Can you share with us some of the things that happened? Because not everybody's had a chance to read through that bill. Well, it's it, if you've never read a 700-page bill, it's not exactly you know easy reading. That would have put uh, me to sleep, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, the nice thing is we live in Arizona, so I actually had it playing on my laptop by the pool. And I just sat there and cleared my emails and listened as they went on and on and on. But there were a couple of things that came out of that bill that were surprises for people. Um, one is that the Independent Payment Advisory Boards, or IPAB. Now, you may not really have heard that too often, but you might have heard them talking during the Obamacare days of... The Death Panel. That's right. And so... It was a part of the Affordable Care Act that was designed so that um, if money started getting tight and they had to make decisions on who would get what treatments, there was a panel that would do that. The people didn't like that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and as of this morning when President Trump signed off the bill, it's gone. So there is no more IPAP. And they also 
moved up the timeline on something else that our seniors aren't real big fans of. You know what that is. The donut hole. That's right. So the donut hole was supposed to close in 2020, um, and this bill that was signed by the president this morning um, gives them a timeline to get it closed by 2019. I can hear the fans applauding right now. I, I, I know that just from my father about getting stuck in that donut hole. So now the donut hole doesn't exist. Now it doesn't. Well, it. We're still in 2018. No, so I'm talking about 2019. Yes, 2019, yes. it goes away. But, you know, one of the things that's interesting is, do you know why they created the donut hole in the first place? I don't know. So when they created Medicare Part D and we started to get payment plans for drugs, which we didn't have with Medicare before, remember? Right. And so the concern was that Medicare Part B... D would just go totally out of control and the seniors would now have like happy days and be getting everything. And so the reason they put the donut hole in was they set it at a limit. So your basic stuff, your Lipitor and stuff like that, you know, would, would cover. But if you started getting into the really fancy stuff or you weren't using generics like you should or things like that, that the spending would go out of control. So the donut hole was there to put an artificial rain on our seniors. Now, when we look at Medicare Part D, it is the only government program I know of that consistently comes in under budget. Our seniors have been responsible in their spending. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good reason for the donut hole to start to go away faster. Well, and, and I know that, you know, I work in the field of caring for seniors. The medication piece is so vital to them. And... You know, we are working so hard and having people like um, Jamie Dimon and, and Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett and, and Amazon to help bring down the cost because we have seniors out there that are choosing not to get their prescriptions filled so they can have a meal. It's, it's ludicrous. Right. We have to figure out a way to make pharma drugs more affordable. Right. Now, what... What they're talking about doing, what Warren and Jamie and, and that whole gang that has come together is talking about doing, is actually focused on the private payer market, not the Medicaid market. Um, and so you've heard about companies that self-insure, yes, right? So Bank of America is the largest self-insurer in healthcare already. Did Berkshire, not know that. Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway obviously has lots of companies. Many of them are self-insured. So what they're looking at is how can they come together and create a new model that will make healthcare more efficient in the private payer market. That will help stabilize our healthcare markets. And if we can stabilize our healthcare markets, we can bring the cost down for everybody. Love it. Absolutely love it. And so much ends up coming from the private sector that affects all of us. It's, it's the nice. American way. I love it. And, you know, I want to I want to close our segment talking about a couple bills that are here in mm -hmm. Arizona. I mean, we've talked about the the big budget and shutdown in Washington, D.C., but we got a couple bills, one you shared with me, and I'd like for you to share with our listening audience, and I'll share the other one with you. Okay. So there are a couple of bills going through right now. One that I think is very cool is House Bill 2558. That's 2558. And this is a bill that is being sponsored by industry and working with the Department of Health Services to create a new web resource to help you learn how to get rid of the drugs you don't need anymore. So we've all had those prescriptions that are sitting on our shelf and we can't flush them down the toilet. We can't put them in the landfill. Where do we take them? This is a new law that will help make it easier to find that information. And yours? And mine is HB. 2087 and it is uh, sponsored by Heather Carter and she's head of the Health and Human Services Committee for the House by the way she's running for Senate uh, mm -hmm. coming this year uh, and AARP and it's a thousand dollar tax credit for those family caregivers that are making the ultimate sacrifice I like to refer to them as our unsung heroes that are not working to stay at home and help their loved ones and this $1,000 tax credit will help them for provisioning services like mine, buying medical equipment, maybe even buying prescription drugs, but it is a tax credit. So we're hoping, got our fingers crossed, that it'll be heard in the House next week, 
and it'll be voted on, and uh, we can make this bill a law. Well, maybe you and some of your listeners should come down and sit in the gallery, and uh, we can ask Heather Carter to recognize you when you're there. I'd love to do that, and I probably will. It's hard to believe, Joan, we're done. I know. I need to have you back. We have so much more to cover. I've got a whole list of questions, so I plan on having you back. Don't be surprised if I call you. Let's do it in the fall when we're getting ready for Arizona Bio Week, and we can tell your listeners all about it. You got it. You've been listening to Health Futures Taking Stock, and you, Joan Corber Walker from AZ Bio, thank you. Make it a great day. Have a great weekend. We'll be back next week. Bye-bye. There's no place like home. You've been listening to Bob Roth's Health Futures. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, Call Cypress Home Care Solutions at 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Or visit cypresshomecare.com. Be sure to join Health Futures with Bob Roth every Friday at noon, right here on Money Radio 1510 and 105.3 FM.